All right, um, let's start the colloquium. Welcome, everyone. Um, today we have uh, Wang Chun Li uh, giving the colloquium. She's a postdoc here in the ASP program uh, since 2016. Prior to that, she uh, graduated from Fudan University in China in 2015 in atomic physics, um, which kind of will show in her talk here. She's interested now in theoretical and laboratory spectropolarimetry. And as luck would have it, we have this um, scattering polarization experiment, which is you know in the hallways known as the sodium experiment. Um, and to the best of my knowledge, this experiment has always been here. I've been here <laughs> more than 11 years, and um, it was there when you arrived. <laughs> it, so far as I know, it was here when the when the building was built. The building presumably was built around the experiment. Yes. I, I assume. Presumably. So uh, finally, we're gonna gonna hear something about this experiment. I'm very excited about it. So, Wangshan, please go ahead. Finally, we can show some uh, uh, convinced results uh, for this uh, experiment. So uh, the motivations. So uh, during the past uh, a few decades, the scattering polarization and uh, its uh, modification uh, in the presence of magnetic field uh, is a fundamental diagnostics of the magnetism of the upper solar atmosphere, especially is the Second solar spectrum shows a great uh, diagnostic value uh, with the development of with the precise instrumentations and uh, with the improvement of the series. But the polarization signals are often very weak, and uh, the quantum mechanical effects, uh, for example, the atomic polarization, Hall effect, and quantum uh, interference and level crossing. Um, are very subtle. So it prevents a quantitative description of the scattering polarization in terms of the classical electrodynamics. The current uh, quantum electrodynamic theory um, has been applied with the confidence to various uh, observations, but uh, they, they are still mysteries and solved. The very famous one is the enigmatic uh, uh, linear polarization of the sodium one, the D1. Transition. This transition happens, happens between the angular quantum number one half and one half. This is kind of transition cannot produce any uh, significant uh, broadband linear polarization um, in the optical scene limit. Uh, but uh, for the observations, uh, there are always the challenging sign uh, signatures happens uh, in the second solar spectrum. These two spectra uh, are mirrored uh, by the example at the NSO uh, kid peak. Um, the left one, uh, we can see the left one is a, it's a near limb observations at the mu equal point one. We can see a very strong and narrow peak at the core of D1 uh, line. Uh, the right one shows that uh, uh, the uh, measurement uh, um, that with the center to uh, limb um, variation. And uh, it shows that the central peak is always there. So it's not a, a property that restricted in the limb readings. So it's uh, not an artifact, it's the real signals. Uh, these measurements from the sample gives the uh, the frequency integrated uh, polarization not to equal zero, uh, but there's also other measurements uh, that shows a different uh, result. This is the observation from using the Messis, I think, Timis, yeah, Timis telescope. Uh, this this is uh, measured during two thousand. Uh, uh, the observational uh, period. And uh, here we didn't see a global polarization signals when integrating with the frequencies. Uh, 
But these results should uh, correspond to the theoretical predictions. Uh, in the theoretical modeling, uh, if we uh, take into account the fan structure and hyper structure quantum inference, uh, and also the uh, in the presence of magnetic field, uh, and also the effect from the level uh, crossing, uh, we didn't see we didn't see a, a linear polarization um, in the optical scene uh, emits. So we can see the shape, the shape of the uh, the shape of the call um, change with the magnetic field strength, and also change with the um, geometries of the magnetic field, uh, and is uh, very sensitive to the field strength and also the inclinations, uh, uh, but. Uh, it always predicts zero polarization uh, signals. So the disagreement between the series and uh, the observations and also the inconsistent with, between the different observations uh, that some people even uh, challenge and uh, question the uh, quantum uh, uh, the theory. So here, very famous two uh, Experiment that is also the laboratory experiment uh, um, was done for the uh, borium two is also for the D D one line, but they use the laser uh, light source. For the laser light source, uh, uh, the radiation is non flat, and there is uh, um, coherent radiation, and the output of the uh, um, light source also has the Polarization, and so we have to. Uh, there's necessary for testing for the adequacy of the current quantum electrodynamic uh, uh, theory uh, of the polarized line formation for the spectrally flat elimination. Um, that the theory that uh, um, present in the book of Edu uh, Landy. So here we devised a laboratory equip experiment and the controlled conditions of magnetic field and the scattering geometry. Uh, this is the uh, setup. Uh, uh, this consists of four uh, legs with the different functions. The input beam, uh, the scattered light analysis, and the light level monitor leg, and the calibration optics. If we look at the top view diagram of this setup, um, the sodium the sodium cell is located at the intersection of the four functional uh, function legs, and and uh, it's uh, surrounded by the two Helmholtz uh, Helmholtz coil pairs that can generate the magnetic field. Uh, when we do the measurement, the, 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 lights, the, light, uh, the input light uh, enters to the cell from the bottom leg. And then the light is scattered by the sodium at uh, 90 degree. Um, and then the light is uh, uh, absorbed by the photomultiplier tube. Uh, the top leg like is uh, used to monitor the output level of the, light, of the input light source. The right leg is the calibration optics. Uh, it's used to input uh, um, all the possible polarization um, states that uh, go through the uh, sodium cell and analyze the um, here we have a polarization selectors uh, um, uh, just behind the, the, the calibration light source. The, uh, this selector in, consists of a, a, pol a linear polarizer uh, mounted at the rotation stage and also a quad wave uh, retarders. Um, we, have, we have also a same polarization selector that at the input beam. This will allow us to study the scattering polarization um, with the polarized light input. But here, we only present the, 
the data and modeling for the um, unpolarized uh, case. Um, in the sodium cell, uh, we have also the argon buff gas inside. Uh, and uh, during the measurement, the sodium is evaporated into the cell from the superbowl by a temperature controlled um, by a typical value of 205 uh, degrees Celsius. Uh, and uh, here we use the um, a bomb that uh, can produce uh, the spectral flight radiation instead of the uh, lasers that uh, um, the Hamilton Square uh, pairs can provide a vector magnetic field uh, for the field strength uh, between 0 and 150 Gauss uh, and at the um, arbitrary directions in the scattering uh, plane. Um, here, for the scattered light analysis leg, uh, we have a uh, um, the polarimeter and uh, the D lines select and the photomultiplier tube. The polarimeter consists of two uh, liquid crystal var variable uh, retarders um, and then followed by a linear polarizer. These two LCVRs uh, oriented at their first axis at zero and 45 uh, degree. And uh, the linear polarizer uh, is oriented at zero. So this will allow us to uh, analyze uh, um, the com complete uh, polarization states. Um, this linear polarizer um, of the parameter also serves as the entrance linear polarizer of the D1, D2 uh, separator. Uh, in the separator, we have the bifurcating the crystals between the two linear polarizers. Uh, this will produce uh, a, fr a chain of spectrum that with a free spectral range that covers uh, um, the uh, twice of the separation of the, the D1 and D2 lines. Um, the third LCVS uh, in the separator is used uh, to shift uh, the channel uh, spectrum to decide which line that can be uh, observed. Yes. Uh, at the end of the separator, we have uh, a 9.5 nanometer wide KG3 filter. This filter is used to block the unwanted uh, orders of the separator. Um, we input the calibration light uh, uh, and go through the, uh, the cell and they analyze the, uh, by the Stokes and LIDAR. If we measure the, the uh, Stokes vectors for the no input uh, Stokes, then we can compute the response matrix of the parameter. Um, on the contrary, if we, for the purpose of the um, scattering signal measurement, we can uh, get the input stokes by multiply uh, the measured stokes by the invert response matrix. Here we use the it should be noted that we use a, a 9.5 nanometer uh, KG3 filter. This will allow the several of these bandwidths are sampled. Uh, so th this will uh, affect uh, the contribution of the background to the measured uh, signals. No spiral graph. Okay. It just the.
So, um, we did the measurement uh, um, by the uh, three steps for each cycle of the measurement. Firstly, we uh, measured the calibration data before the measurement. And then we took the background at the beginning of the uh, measurement. The calibration data and the background the measurement I both obtained uh, without uh, the sodium, uh, so it's uh, uh, the code cell. Um, and the background is the uh, combination of the really scattering by the ion buff gas and uh, the parasitic uh, reflections of the uh, cell walls. Um, to investigate, to investigate the, the dependence of the uh, scattering polarization on the magnetic field, uh, here we created the magnetic field uh, between one and the one between zero and 150 Gauss instead of 10 Gauss. And uh, we um, have the inclination uh, from the direction of the incident irradiation between zero and 90 degrees instead of 30 degrees. Uh, for the measurement, we measured the six modulated uh, states, uh, the I plus Q, I plus minus Q, U, and V. And then we do a uh, combination by plus and minus to get the fourth Stokes states. And then we uh, multiply with the invert response matrix that obtained from the calibration measurement to get the uh, uh, input uh, scattering polarization signal. And the, the, the resulting uh, uh, Stokes uh, um, have a uh, typically uncertainty of uh, 10 to minus uh, 3 in the in this experiment. So here is the uh, e experiment. Here is only shows the exper experimental results with no uh, modeling. Um, this uh, uh, the top one is the D1 line, the bottom is the D D2. And uh, it's changed with at the function of the magnetic field, uh, and also at the four different uh, uh, magnetic uh, geometries with 0, 30, 60, and 90 degree of the magnetic field. Uh, the results are the average the over 12 different uh, realizations of, of the experiment. Uh, here we can see it's, it's uh, noise for the D1 and also the the V of uh, V of I of D2 since the signals are very weak, um, but we can still can see that uh, the dependence uh, and the trend uh, changes with the magnetic field, and and also at with the different uh, uh, magnetic field angles. So. In order to compare and fit with the experimental data and to gain insight into the physics of the resonance scattering of the D1, D2 lines, here we use the formula of the multi-level, multi-level atom with the hyperfine uh, structure. So, so So, 
Here, in order to compare with the existing data, we have a uh, four uh, modeling hypotheses. The first is the flat spectral uh, emulation. Here, we you since we use the uh, uh, bump to uh, as the the light source, so it will be and the uh, complete the redistribution um, hypothesis. Um, that means that the radiation scattering can be described uh, as the uh, incurrent uh, succession of the single photon abs absorption and uh, re uh, emission. And the second uh, um, assumption is that uh, there's the elastic collisions that happens in the cell that will produce the partial depolarization of the atomic levels. Uh, so here we can um, use the two depolarizing rates, uh, data one and two, as the three parameters in the modeling. We use the same values for the ground state and the excited state, uh, but the ground level is completely depolarized due to the very long uh, lifetime. The third hypothesis is the inelastic collisions. Uh, in the conditions of our experiment, uh, the temperature is very low, so um, the excitation that induced the, by the inelastic collisions uh, uh, is uh, negligible, but uh, the polarization that is induced uh, by the elastic collisions cannot be ignored. So here we uh, treat a third free parameter um, of the de-excitation of the atomic uh, levels. Um, the fourth is uh, we uh, assume that the, the vapor um, is in the optical scene. So we can study the we can study the scattering polarization using the, the emissivity. Uh, for the multi-level atom formalisms, uh, uh, here we uh, describe the emissivity of each line of D1, D2 as uh, the stokes of the incident radiation that is scattered from the omega prime to the direction of the omega in the presence of the magnetic field and with the polarization of I. And with the frequency integrated absorption coefficients key. And the P is the highly phase matrix. It can be described in terms of the absorption tensors and the polarity of the uh, Hanifis uh, um, uh, matrix. The, ob the observational tensors uh, uh, characteristic the um, scattering geometries and the polarity factor describes uh, um, the dependence uh, of the Hanifis matrix on the magnetic field. And the polarity factor then consists of all the physical parameters here. Um, so um, we can. Yeah, and the, we can get the angle values, uh, the, um, the small um, omega, and uh, also the coefficients of C by um, by the diagonalization of the uh, magnetic field and hyperfine structure Hamiltonian. Um, this factor consists uh, of the Henle factor and also the level uh, crossing uh, interference. So now the remaining three three parameters uh, here is the data and uh, the epsilon. The data here is the depolarizing collisions that we have uh, talked about. Uh, um, the, for the key equal one, represent uh, the orientation 
relaxation. The kid equal to represent the, the alignment. And uh, epsilon is the only elastic collisions. And in particular, if we have the key prime equal two and the key equal one, um, that's the alignment to orientation transfer uh, mechanisms. So we can adjust the, these three parameters to do our modeling for the emissivity. So that's the modeling results. Here we use the same skill with the experimental data as I showed before. Um, we can see that uh, we didn't see any linear polarization for D1. Uh, and there's some for D2, but it's uh, below the uh, sensitivity of 10 to minus 3 in our uh, measurement. So if we compared with the experimental data, they are in the same scale. So they didn't uh, produce uh, the uh, linear polarization that's sh shown in our experiment data. Uh, and also the, the V over I of D1 and D2 is also much smaller than our measured uh, data. So we need a more modeling hypothesis to have a to interpret our observations. So here we have two additional modeling hypotheses. One is uh, instead of the optical seeing plasmas, uh, here we assume that it's in the optical seek regime. So and the optical seek, we have to take into account the effect from the differential saturation of the uh, components. And uh, this, this uh, things out to be very important uh, at, uh, for our to interpret our experimental data. And uh, secondly, we, are, we have also to consider the quantum interference uh, that uh, between the fine structure and the hyperfine structure levels. Um, although this is also only give a very small corrections to the results. The third important uh, effect uh, is that the magnetic induced uh, dichroism, this will affect uh, the, uh, both the D1 line emission and also the background radiation um, through the sodium uh, vapor. So um, at this point under the optical seek regime, we cannot do the background subtraction by just uh, subtract the background to uh, get the data that f contribution from the um, sodium lines. So we must to uh, treat the background radiation as a boundary term of the solution of, for the relative transfer equation. Here we show the relative transfer uh, equation here, uh, the smallest is the coordinate uh, uh, along the optical path, and the epicenter is the emissivity uh, that we showed before. Um, and uh, the key is the 4 by 4 uh, absorption matrix. Uh, that uh, uh, this uh, includes the dichroism and also the magneto optical uh, effect. Um, so here we use the, the multi-term multi atom with the hyperfine structures uh, because this gives a better fit uh, for our experimental data uh, compared with the multi-level. And also we can reduce the free parameters uh, uh, to half of the values of, uh, in the multi-level case. So, so this finally we compared with the expanded data. Uh, the symbols with the arrow bars is the expanded data and the, 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 the straight curves with the different uh, colors correspond uh, to the uh, uh, modeling results. And uh, we can see that uh, uh, the D1, 
the, the, the linear polarization of, of D1 and also the V uh, over I signals uh, of both D1 and D2 fit uh, uh, very good. Um, so here, um, the optical uh, the optical depths uh, affect uh, um, affect the linear polarization of D1 and uh, the uh, circular polarization of D1 and D2 um, due to the difference of saturation factor. So um, the, we can determine the optical depth uh, tau equal 1.3 uh, by uh, fit uh, the values of the V over I values. Um, the other three three parameters, uh, is delta 1, delta 2, and epsilon, uh, can also be uh, determined uh, by fit uh, the signals. Um, the delta 1 is uh, effect, uh, it affect uh, the circular polarization. But now if we consider the day, the day polarization, then this signal will be suppressed, uh, so we cannot get the very well uh, constrained by uh, this uh, measurement data. But we have also the circular polarized input uh, data, uh, which uh, gives uh, a much larger circular polarized signal. So here we fit the, that the circular polarized uh, data to get the um, data one value equal 13. Um, the data two values uh, will determine the, the magnitudes of the uh, linear polarization of D2 and also here the crossing point uh, of the U over I signals. So here we determine the delta 2 equal 19. The last one is the uh, elastic uh, coherence rates. Uh, this will uh, determine the polarization, the zero field polarization values of D2. Here we, to fit these values, we get the epsilon equal 0.44. All the values here is in the unit of Einstein coefficient. So these results has the, 384 independent measurements, but we only fit the uh, results using three free model parameters, the optical depth, the depolarizing um, rates, and uh, the inelastic uh, correlation rates. Here we in, uh, ignore the data one since it's not uh, well constrained in our experiment with the unpolarized uh, input. So the very uh, good uh, agreement uh, with the uh, model confirms that uh, the current QED theory of scattering polarization in the uh, CRD limit uh, is correct. Uh, when, we, when the incident radiation is spectrally flat across the, uh, the atomic uh, transition. So here, I give the concurrence. First, the, the, uh, we proved that the current theory of the scattering polarization in the limit of CRD is inadequate for the modeling of the polarized radiation um, scattering in a uh, magnetized gas eliminated by a spherically flat radiation. But for the realistic uh, solar atmosphere uh, models, uh, the CRD uh, doesn't work anymore. So here we uh, have to uh, include the, the polarization um, that's uh, induced by the coherent uh, radiation effects. Um, the, the same QED formula them has been extended to treat uh, this PRD uh, effects. And uh, by including the PRD effects, uh, uh, in the realistic solar atmosphere models, uh, and it, it had been proved uh, that uh, the enigma 
is solved. There's no more uh, enigmatic uh, signals, and uh, is there's the example of the um, PRD modeling results with the PRD and relative transfer. Um, here in the modeling, it takes into account the um, the detailed spectral structure over the uh, uh, hyperfine structures, um, and it shows the the shape of the D1 cause change with change with the center to limbo variation. And uh, if we compare the, this modeling results uh, with the observations uh, um, of the D1 line, we can see it can uh, very good produce the same uh, results, uh, and even also the uh, the very uh, weak the wing signals, uh, and there's a, um, a deep. Yeah, so now we can conclude that uh, we proved that the correctness of the uh, theory and also we solved the, it's also solved the, the problem of the enigma signa signals of the uh, D1 line. Okay, so here we, this work is also um, promoted uh, by the ADD uh, Landy, so we dedicated this work uh, uh, to him and for his uh, contribution. And uh, uh, the mag magnet field, the Hemholtz coil is uh, uh, built by the Greg, and we thanks uh, for his support uh, for the design of the construction of the experiment. We also thanks for the dis useful discussions uh, with the uh, people. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. We have uh, time for questions. Anybody? Phil? Essentially, to interpret these observations, I mean, you, you can put vector 
results, or the experimental results. Yeah. Yeah. To interpret these things, we say, well, you know, uh, let's assume that uh, it is an optical thin gas, so that we can use the simple book level model that we can uh, then create an analytic algebraic form uh, for the emissivity in the two lines independently, and then uh, you know, we plot them and we see what we get. And what we get is the, the emissivity where D1 stays flat. So, you know, we bang our head, uh, you know, for years say, well, uh, what's going on? Uh, maybe there is a uh, cross talk between the two lines, uh, yeah. or, uh, um, you know, who knows what? Uh, maybe we are not centering the line selector perfectly, and we are polluting the polarization from the two to the one. And, uh, and instead, you know, turned out to be an effect of optical depth. Yeah. Uh, so until when Xiang got the code and uh, you know, started playing with it, and we, yeah, and we also have the recent data that uh, we didn't find any evidence of the optical thickness. Uh, this with the same cell, with the same cell of the uh, the one we used in two thousand and six, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's uh, after more than ten years. And then we redo the measurement uh, last year, and we didn't see the trend uh, change with the magnetic yeah. field. And uh, well, what, what happens is that with a lot of views, uh, you start uh, you know picking out the sodium from uh, the pot, uh, in, and so you spill it everywhere. Right. So it becomes less available. You know, you're creating less, opti more, more and more optical field. Which, yeah. which is the dominant isotope, and just the fine structure. So mm -hmm. Which is the dominant isotope?
salt e gets different results, that, uh, yeah, sure, they cannot be explained with this theory. But, you know, the claims went all the way to say, well, the theory does not uh, match our experiment, and therefore there's a problem with bumping the count, which is a kind of, yeah. I know that people start questioning also Maxwell's equation, right? We, we got zero. <laughs> we, we, we had a colloquium about this exact method of uh, the testing theories <laughs> <laughs> a couple yeah. of weeks ago <laughs> yeah. by, uh, by uh, Professor Cleland. Uh, yeah. yeah, this is not even, I mean, not even mm -hmm. what we offer. I mean, this yeah. is just, you know, you don't, uh, you know, nullify quantum mechanics based on uh, one experiment, but you try to understand what are the conditions for the experiment, which takes two experiments. So you can use some of those big signs and those are quantum mechanics. Yeah, you can. Uh, or, or an asylum, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'd point out that the uh, first detection of black hole mergers was also published in FizRef letters. So clearly, that's you know a respectable publication these days. All right. Any more uh, questions, comments? Okay. With uh, let's close the discussion in. And thanks, Wang Chen Li, again. Yeah.